There was this popular theory about Allosaurus floating around by a paleontologist and is still believed today. I am talking about the axe bite hypothesis for Allosaurus by Robert Backer, but is this theory actually true and or plausible? This theory states that Allosaurus would use its head like an axe, slamming the top part of its jaw into flesh to kill prey with repeated stabs. This was shown in the documentary Planet Dinosaur. This theory was suggested because of Allosaurus's perceived low bite force, and high neck flexibility and strength. However this has never been observed in any other animal. But let's dive deeper into these two subjects. Allosaurus is thought by the general public to have had a weak bite. Planet Dinosaur suggested that its bite was weaker than a lion, which is extremely pitiful for an animal that is bigger than a hippo. Its bite force is often cited as 3,570 newtons, and while this is high in absolute terms, it's low for the animal's size. However, this is actually horridly outdated. This came from a study conducted all the way back in 2001. Unfortunately this study is a product of its time, and used methods that got underestimated results for reptiles like Tyrannosaurus rex, which only got a result of 13,400 newtons. This seems high until you realize this is the same bite force as an American alligator, an animal with a much smaller muscle structure and skull. It also got inflated results for mammals like lions, because mammals tend to bite and thrash their prey, leading to this absurdly high values. Later studies that happen later got different values, Tyrannosaurus's bite force is mo thought to be in TBE range of 30,000 to 90,000 newtons of force on the anterior portion of the skull, while Allosaurus has a much higher bite force than often assumed, with the newest studies published in 2021 and 2022 suggest that average sized A. Fragilis had a bite force of 8,000 to 1,000 newtons. This is triple of what was thought before, when the axe bite hypothesis was considered. This bite force is over five times as much as the estimated bite force of a lion from a 2007 study comparing carnivorans, which has a bite force around 1,200 to 2,000 newtons. Allosaurus's bite force is still not super high however, ATL East compared to some other theropods. But is far from the weak amount than is usually thought. Allosaurus had a proportional bite force on similar levels to a big cat, which means to it had a bite force powerful enough to be used to kill prey. Secondly, while Allosaurus did indeed have a wide gape as well as a ventriflex of neck, the assumption that it would be used as a bear trap is not as substantiated as one may think. There are many different, possibly more plausible ways Allosaurus developed these adaptions instead of using its head like a hammer. It's not anatomically possible for most of its head to actually hit the target, only the tip of its jaw, which is not the section of the skull that is adapted to absorbing high forces. Lastly, and our final point. Is it possible? Well. In conclusion the answer is a resounding no. See, the act of smashing its skull onto a prey item would be extremely dangerous for an animal like Allosaurus, even if it could handle high forces, a slam like that would actually greatly harm the animal and its skull would break. The end result of this maneuver would end in a dislocated jaw. Here is a clip from your dinosaurs are wrong. Using my highly engineered examples of dinosaur prey at different gauges, so either this is a smaller animal or it's a smaller part of a bigger animal. Even with the huge 80 degree gape that an Allosaurus would attack with, if it's trying to do a hatchet bite onto a larger animal, it's going to either only be able to engage with the very front of its mouth, or it's going to hit jaw first and dislocate or break its jaw depending on how much force it's acting with. It could probably manage a sort of swiping bite, and this is consistent with what we know about its neck muscles, that it could probably do a Komodo dragon-like lateral pull. But I don't know if that's exactly what Rayfield at all were talking about, and it would definitely be consistent with the hugging hypothesis that we talked about earlier. The trouble with this is that if it's only getting a nibble on the very front of its mouth, that's not the part of its skull that's really suited to absorbing forces. That's a relatively weak part of the upper tooth row. So what if it hits a smaller animal or a smaller part of that same large animal? Well, then it fares a little better. It's able to actually engage it with the top of its tooth row, but you run into another problem because those parts of an animal or those animals, if it's coming down onto them, you're going to hit the spine or the hip. You're going to hit bone, and you're probably going to shed teeth. And we do actually find a lot of Allosaurus teeth. It's a fairly common tooth fossil, but if you're going to shed teeth with every prey capture, that's untenable. And I don't want to seem like I'm down on Dr. Rayfield and colleagues. I, I absolutely support having more numbers and hard science in paleontology. It's just that jump from these are the numbers associated with this bone to this is the behavior that that would require um, needs to be filtered carefully. The force required to sustain this would be too much, and the method itself is not objective enough to even warrant this much effort, as it would be extremely awkward to pull off and would not deal as much damage as simply biting. So what would Allosaurus do? Well, 
I would describe this theory as being one on the right track, an interesting idea that had some basis but went a little too far away of the realm of what is possible. It's definitely not impossible that Allosaurus actually would have incorporated some parts of this theory in its hunting strategies to a lesser extent, as it may have used its ventriflexive neck to precisely attack a prey item's arteries or to jaw grapple their necks and sink its teeth to bleed them out and rip out flesh. But for the most part it would likely have behaved like a regular predatory dinosaur that used its jaws to target the neck and deliver a killing bite and squeeze. It may have also at times used its arms to stay stable and hold onto a prey item at close range but it would not be able to use wild technoques like hatchet biting to kill its prey, and this method of attack would be really ineffective anyway. Thanks for watching the video.